In today's session, we will discuss the assist panel, what lives in the assist panel, a variety of different tools and gadgets and filters live under the assist panel. Let's log into the system and go through these. From the dashboard, let's navigate over to the pay frequency filter. So this first filter allows organizations that have multiple pay cycles, for example, bi-weekly, weekly, weekly semi-monthly, to filter between those frequencies. The other filter option that you have, click on the drop-down arrow, and you're able to filter from the current pay period to a previous pay period or to the next pay period. Then if you click on this arrow here, this also allows you to filter to a previous pay period or click on this arrow to the right and that allows you to filter to a future pay period. The next filter that we have on here, if there is a specific group of employees that you would like to filter by, this allows you an opportunity to click on all and then you would see your employee list and then you can say, I only wanna see information for Harold, for Victoria, for my ABC employee, for Catherine, and then you would say OK, and then that filter would apply. Also, you can filter by your work groups and by your pay policies, your pay category shifts, holiday rules, or pay types or pay methods. So this allows you to filter information by your exempt employees, non-exempt employees, or those FLSA eligible employees. So you cancel out. The other filter that you have on here is this refresh button. So what this allows you to do is to refresh the data. So as soon as I refresh it, then it's going to have the latest information. Under your settings, you can enable a feature where this dashboard can update every five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You can set up those parameters. All right, so now let's proceed and navigate over to your exceptions gadget. So this is going to be the supervisor and administrator's best friend. This allows you to see what's going on for you for your organization during a specific pay period. For this period of March 1st through March 14th, I don't have any employees who are absent, but I do have an employee with a missing punch. This needs to be addressed before the end of the pay period. What else do I see on here? If your organization has specified that you want your supervisors or administrators to see who has overtime, that's why this appears on here. If you click on this gadget, then it's going to filter out all those employees that have have overtime for the period. We had 89 hours of overtime and that's between all these employees that you see on the list. And on here, you would see overtime column one, and that's where those hours are applied. And then you go to the next employee, and then that's how you would see the hours that are applied for Lou and the hours that apply for Thomas and so forth. Now let's go back to your dashboard. The next exceptions that I have on here is early in, early out. Now this strictly depends on your organization. If you assign specific shifts for your employees, our system would need to know what those parameters are. Are. are these employees working Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. with a 30 minute or an hour meal break? So if your organization does not have specific shifts assigned, then you would not be able to see the early ins, early out for your employees. Okay, so let's move on to the next gadget, which is the time off request status. By default, you're going to see what is happening on the current pay period. So on here, we can see that there are some pending requests. Now there's an exclamation point. What that means is that this item impacts the current pay period and it needs to be addressed. So either you need to approve the request or decline the request to address an item click on pending and this will take you directly to where all those items live and this is where you'll need to look at your calendar and see what's going on for your department and decide if you need to approve or decline a request let me go back to your dashboard so these items impact the current pay period and need to be addressed. The next gadget is your timesheet status. This allows you to see the life cycle of your timesheets. So all timesheets start out at an unopened status. However, as employees start clocking in and out, those timesheets will move to an open status. If your organization requires employees to submit their timesheets at the end of the pay period, then you as a supervisor and also an administrator would see those timesheets that have been submitted. Once supervisors review timesheets, make the appropriate corrections and stamp their timesheets with their approval, then timesheet status will move over to approved. And once the payroll department has performed all their audits and everything is good to go, then what they will do is they'll create a payroll file and all timesheets will move to a payroll status. So this here allows you as a supervisor to see the status and the life cycle of the timesheets and also for administrators, they can see exactly what's going on for the entire organization.